<laughs> new pen, you can open one. Shit, I'm not opening. Oh, then let's go. Sh should I open? Let me open uh, a little bit. Uh, what's up, everyone? It's Penuel, the Black Pen, and I'm quite excited today. I'm, I'm, I'm hosting probably one of the greatest minds we have in the country, uh, one of the greatest minds for the future. I'm kind of sad that he focuses his energy, as far as I know, on this like one project we're going to be speaking about today. <laughs> and I'm hoping that in time he's going to be expanding his mind and hopefully consulting for so many more people. We celebrate the People's Fund. Uh, and if you've never heard about it, please stay tuned and listen. Luanda Jafta. Mfwet, how are you doing? Mfwet, I'm good. And how are you doing? No, I'm, I'm chilled. I'm, I'm here to relearn, to learn, and hopefully to educate mm. as many people in the audience as possible. Gotcha. Um, obviously, formalities. Um, how are you doing? How's your family doing? How's business? Oh, I'm great, man. Yeah. I'm feeling good. Um, you and I were chatting before we started the podcast that uh, I'm doing urge control right now, right? Urge. Urge control, Oof. which is basically the management of the human urges, right? Okay. Uh, discipline. Discipline, basically. Okay. That's the simple word, self-control okay. and discipline. So that's going great. Yeah. Um, foregoing the old gods <laughs> for the new ones, right? Dirt, the dirty gods. <laughs> the dirty <We> gods. <laughs> the dirty gods being whatever addiction you, you, you come from, right? Yeah. I'm dealing with the final one now, which is uh, food addiction, <laughs> sugar addiction. Okay. Um, but I'm good. Um, family is good. Um, I'm good. Yeah. Business is good. You know. Congrats, bro! You guys are celebrating a milestone as the yeah. People's Fund. Six years, six years of being in business. Um, it's been incredible, man. Yeah. Um, in that time, we've done ridiculously crazy things. That like I only Um Dali would have allowed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think human ability could have done the things. Uh, you know, most entrepreneurs we say this, but we don't say it lightly. That we got incredibly lucky. Um, we worked. Don't you get believe in luck? I don't. I believe in grace. I don't believe in luck. Um, What's the difference? Um, it's gonna get technical. Right? Okay. Okay. It's gonna get technical. But grace is above luck. It's more. Maybe we'll say the universe and the higher powers merging. Mm. Mm. To ensure that things align, hundred percent. Yeah, it's 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 being in. Let's call it it's it's let's call it God's perfect will. Okay, Grace. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> if we can take a step back, because we're here to celebrate you, mm. the birth of the People's Fund yeah. at inception. Yeah, uh, we're gonna do the journey up until today. Yeah, what are you doing in your life? Scratching around, <laughs> trying to find something great. <laughs> uh, how does the People's Fund get born? Got you. So. Phew, Seven years ago, mm. uh, almost to the day, I'm in the middle of a campaign. I've got a digital marketing background, mm. right? We're selling, we're doing it for, at the time, I think I can mention that now, the campaign's so old, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a campaign for BP, right? Okay. Um, it's a TV show. It's called Change Down. Mm. Doing it with one of my close friends. Uh, he invites me in to do the digital marketing, mm. right? And in the show, we're giving away a prize where people are basically going to win a gusheshe. You know, oh, that's dope. Um, and all they have to do is upload receipts of them buying petrol at BP, BP. right? Yeah, and the nice thing about that campaign, how we ran it, we could track the sales we were driving from the actual campaign because people would upload um, their receipts onto yeah. their platform, right? So you could say, Man, we sold X amount of petrol, mm. right? <laughs> like online, right? Digital marketing wasn't a, a thing it seven years ago, it was still relatively new, it was relatively young. Yeah. Um, I mean. Before that, why I was even called up for that campaign, I used to run a company called Paybook, right? Mm. We do digital marketing. We did influencer marketing back in 2012, right? When, when we didn't even know <laughs> no. there was such a thing. Exactly. The word didn't even exist. Yeah. Um, and what we do is we pay people to tweet, right? From an affiliate marketing perspective, right? Mm. If somebody clicks on the thing, we share the proceeds with the person who, who got the click and whatever. So yeah. when we did that, I'm in the middle of that campaign, um, me and you were talking about the boredom of uh, lack of creativity and mm. being able to give the corporate answer, right? Yeah. Like with any campaign, anybody knows the first, the hardest part is the first two months, right? Because you're doing a setup, right? Okay. With any any project, almost even, right? Then three month month three onwards, right? Let's say it's a six month project. You're managing and maintaining. You're gonna be bored as hell. <laughs> I hear you. If your intent is to create, I hear you. Right. So, in the middle of that. Checks are coming in decently. My firstborn is about to get born in November. Yeah. Uh, um, sure. 
life is about to change, right? Yeah. Um, up until this point, I'm a selfish little bugger. <laughs> cares only about himself, <laughs> right? Um, never truly loved somebody outside of myself. And I didn't realize that until I loved my daughter, right? Okay. And what you, I mean... You, you assumed that you loved. Yeah, I assumed. But you didn't, you didn't know what true love was until, until your daughter. Okay. 100%. Um, and I think the Greeks call it agape, you know? Okay. Um, um, when they describe the four kinds of love. Love between friends, love between lovers, love between parent, child, and yeah. then the love of God. Right? Okay. Um, and my daughter gets born. Oh, I experience the worst confusion of my life, right? Because it's like, what is this? What is this that I'm feeling? <laughs> I, want, I want this person to have everything perfect. Yeah. And... She doesn't have to do anything. She yeah. doesn't have to. She doesn't have to reciprocate anything, yeah. right? It's a non-reciprocal love. It's like, what is this feeling? Yeah. Like, I just want to pour into this person. You, you don't know? owe me anything. You don't I owe will me do everything. anything, right? Your yeah. existence is my joy, right? Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's why it's called agape because that's similar to the love they say God has for us. Mm. It's your existence gives me joy. It's yeah. not your actions. Um. And in the middle of that, like I'm like, man, what am I gonna do for this child? Like I just wanna provide, like, yeah. like ridiculously well, you know. And at the time, I'm trying to figure out my path. Um, I've moved from atheism to agnosticism, mm -hmm. right? Figuring out my path. I experience her, and I'm like, oh, there definitely is a god. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like to, to experience a love this intense, right? Um, at the time, I'm doing a lot of shrooms. Right, from time to time. Shrooms are mushrooms. These are drugs. These are drugs. Not Jeez. Even, I'm even doing worse. I'm doing LSD, not even shrooms. Wow. <laughs> um, Do you remember why you were doing drugs? Yeah. Um, I've I've never liked drugs. Okay. I was doing a lot of meditation at the time. Okay. And I was struggling to break through. And then one of the things I researched, they said, Oh man, if you're struggling to break breakthrough is the complete cessation of your self. Leaving you, self. Leaving self. Okay. Leaving self, letting the ego die, ego death, as they call it. Yeah. Right? And I was struggling to break through to ego death so that I don't have all of these little gods, mm. right? And I read something and they're like, oh yeah, no, try psychedelics. Mm. Like, Eat drugs. Never. <laughs> Eat tagami. So yeah. I am not doing that. I've got a very highly addictive personality. Yeah. I'm not touching them. But then I started doing more and more research, right? And the thing I discovered was, oh man, firstly, it's very hard. It's near impossible to get it addicted to psychedelics, right? Because once they come into your system... You can't use it again tomorrow. It's got a long flush out period. Mm. Does that make sense? So I hear you. You you wait three to six months before you can take them again, and they have an effect, okay. right? So I was like, I'm scared of trying this. Mm. Went to one of my friends who's like a strong mathematician, right? Um, but he struggled from depression, and he did a lot of psychedelics. I was like, man, tell me about this thing, right? Mm. Um, and he explained it like from beginning to end and how he actually got off his antidepressant medication yeah. by the, the functional use of microdosing and various other things of psychedelics. Then I read a book called The Psychedelic... What's the, the Explorer's Guide to Psychedelics, right? Okay. And when I was listening to it, I was like, man, these things are not drugs. These things are gateways, right? <laughs> like these things are gateways. And then gateways but to self. Um, then I, I started... I took them the first time. <gasps> I... Penuel, I, I, I've experienced... This was, was before... You are speaking about before your daughter was Before born. my daughter. Okay. Before my daughter. I uh, remember... I'll describe the experience because it's important for other people's fun got started, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I took them and I walk... I, stay, I stayed in Soweto, a back room at my, at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. I walked from there to the tuck shop, right? Um, as I'm walking, it starts kicking, Right? Like I took a small, 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 small dose. As it kicks, you know, like usually you're feeling the wind between your fingers, right? Yeah. What I experienced was I was the wind brushing through my fingers. I know it sounds insane. Yeah, it does sound insane. It does sound, it sounds insane. But I was like, whoa, what is this? Like I could feel my fingers as the wind, right? And there's this one connectedness that I just felt of all of existence, right? Mm. I looked at the clouds. I felt like I could pull them down, <laughs> right? And and like hold them close to me, yeah. you know? And then from that, what happened is the ego death happened. Like this immediacy of myself, this this is me and this is as far as an extent, it broke down and broke. And that's what the wind, feeling the wind was like. That this is my barrier of who Luyanda is broke down. Mm. 
what I felt was I'm part of all of it, mm. right? That's the first experience. But it was like Neo in the Matrix, basically. Okay. Right? Like basically. Okay. Right? Um, that was my first experience. Um, then I think my third experience was when the People's Fund was. This is post my daughter being born. Okay. Um. Because I didn't do that many. You know, it's weird. I said I was doing a lot of shrooms. <laughs> it's like at the time, I think I did, it was my third high. Yeah. Because it takes so long before you can um, do a high again. As I did that high, um, something else happened, right? Every experience is different. Mm. And I often think what is happening with psychedelics is there's things in the recesses of your subconscious mind, right? Uh, think of it like going into your shadow to go figure out what is mm. bad, what is good, and all of those things. And they're trying to push through. So they usually use dreams to try to push through, to mm. say, man, look at this part of yourself. Look at this part of yourself, right? And what happens with psychedelics, that barrier between conscious and subconscious minds breaks and opens. And then there's a, there's a, there's a flooding of information that mm. you're picking up, but you're not consciously interacting with, right? Is Impe a poor psychedelic? No. no. I ask this because these Angoma and Nyanga, obviously, mm. they will burn this to try and invoke yes. the subconscious Subconscious. No, so let me... Let sorry, me. I, I don't want us to veer yeah, into... No, we won't veer into... That philosophy. Into, I was just asking, sorry. No, it's actually an interesting question because in the same way, one of the lighter psychedelics, right, yeah. is weed. Because I was going to link it to marijuana. marijuana. Maybe I'm a raster because of a higher consciousness. Yeah. They say we burn this thing, but we don't just burn it. We inhale by smoking. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, so... I don't know, man. Um, you don't have to answer. You're third, you're third <laughs> high. <laughs> no, let me get into it. There's something interesting that, 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 that you mentioned there. Imperpo is basically sage, right? Um, loosely, right? Mm. And in many different cultures, people use them to ward off... Bad spirits. Bad spirits, yeah. right? Um, and, and, and it's got a long history across all cultures, right? Of, Correct. Of, 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 of it being used that way. But it can't be compared to psychedelics. So psychedelics, what they're reacting with directly is actually your mind. Okay. Um, and what is interesting through my journey is that interaction with the with the mind has been always my mind has been my god for a very long time, right? Mm. And ego death was sur like a form of surrender, right? So now on the third high, um, what happens is time like basically stands still. So you know the space time continuum, and I'll describe it. It's, um, in science, it's often considered that space and time are like the same thing right okay uh, they're the um, one is a continuum over the, the other what like one is the continuation of the other i'm not describing it very well my science friends will help me in the comments sure. <laughs> right but in that space-time continuum one of the things we know very clearly is that we as humans perceptually can move any direction through space but only one direction through time Okay. Right? We go forward, perceptually. Okay. Right? In science, there is no such thing. You can move all directions in time. Right? Okay. Um, what happens in my high is that the space-time uh, continuum gets reversed. So, in space, I can only sit in one place. But in time, I can move in every direction. I know yeah. it sounds weird. But, like, I, be I became timeless. Right? Okay. And one of the places I decided to go visit while I was on this high was like the future, right? And in the future, all I saw <laughs> was collaborative economies, right? People working together to create things in small pockets and hives of their existence where there's not a uni, a uni, uni, a universal power structure where there's four oligopolies in any industry yeah. running the entire thing. This is like beehives. Like beehives. Okay. <laughs> Weird. That's the first campaign we ran on, ran on the People's Fund. Hectic. <laughs> that you run beehives, right? That you mentioned beehives. Um... It's like beehives, like there's there's a bunch of colonies. That's mm. the perfect example. There's a bunch of colonies that exist and these colonies are self-sufficient and they're not governed by a single power. They're governed by their functionality, by their y utility within the ecosystem, mm. right? And that's how the people's fund was started. I know it sounds weird, but literally it was like, man, we need to do collaborative economies. Um, everyone's going to have a shared piece of the entire economy. What year is this? This is 2017. Um, 2017 is late. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've been a fan of the concept of Stockfells for a really long time. Mm. Uh, I've studied banking. I worked for the banks. I studied insurance. And uh, we didn't have nice terms like crowdfunding yeah. and collaborative economy. But maybe this is where the universe conspires, what yeah. you call grace. Yeah. The idea of 
Stockfells. I had my own Stockfell idea, which mm. eventually crashed in 2016. Mm. But the idea of there are people that in small groups, today we've got cooperatives. Yeah. Uh, there's the story of Grameen Bank mm. and how they work. It's something I've always been fascinated by. Mm. And I remember when, when you guys launched, mm. I was like, this is what we were meant to be doing. Yep. And even now, we can speak about BRICS and the UN and those things. Mm. The idea of collaboration, but not, like you said, at the top, mm. but getting people to collaborate at the bottom. 100%. How do you get off, maybe you didn't get off the high, but how do you move from that space where you look into the future, you see collaborative economies, and then you come back and you're like, I will begin building them. Because they're going to happen anyways. 100%. But I guess this was my call to you, bro, this is the time. So the best way I could answer that, right? To say, how did I get off that and come into this? Right? 2017. 2017, yeah. right? Is, I'll have to use your name to answer this. Right? Okay. <laughs> um. So, interestingly, like every time I interact with you, right? I see a man battling with highest truth. Right? Yeah. And what I mean by highest truth is... um. You know, there was a time there was penulism. Is it still there? Like, still there. It's, it's still there. It's five years old now. Five years old. Yeah, my religion's five years old. <laughs> uh, and what was funny for me about that, right? Yeah. It's like when I look at your name, right? Um, Penuel, mm. right? Um, do you know the origins of that name? It's Hebrew. Hebrew. Right? For the face of God. Um, yeah, even deeper than that, right? Mm. There's a place where... Um, Jacob yes. was wrestling with God, right? With an angel, with, with an God. Angel, yeah. angel of the Lord, let's call it that, right? Yeah. Jacob was wrestling with God and then um, God touched his hip and uh, to show that, or the angel showed that, touched his hip to show that it was you were wrestling with God, right? Mm. Um, and that place he was at got called Penuel, mm. right? Which is um, wrestling with God, right? Mm -hmm. And there's things you know naturally. Like I see you pick them up like without thought, right? Which has to do with loosely your name, right? Um, you're wrestling with God because you're wrestling with the highest truth, mm. right? When something comes to you, you see it immediately, right? From that truth lens. The same way, my name is Luyanda and Skulule, mm. right? Luyanda means it's growing. Skulule means set us free, yeah. right? Um I found out a few days ago. Story of Moses. <laughs> Sorry. Story of Moses. I found out um, not a few days ago, a few months ago, that like the name Jesus, yeah. Yeshua, means um, the one, the Savior, who set people free. Yeah. It's like, ah, we share a name. <laughs> <laughs> That's my name, bro. <laughs> That's my name, bro. Um, I, li I like the idea of Uluyanda, no? It's Kulule. It's Kulule. Yeah. Set us free. Because the set us free is the story of Moses. Yeah. Uh, Luyanda is expanding. I it's guess expanding. the idea of moving into a future comes set us free. To move, move to the to future. A hundred percent. Okay. And the thing that came naturally to me, right, was I know how to scale businesses, like mm. very easily. That's the Luyanda part. Skulule is is something being unleashed in people mm. by this, right? And it became very obvious when I came from the dream, oh man, I'm supposed to use what God has given me, right? Mm. To actually go unlock in humans the ability to see their power, yeah. right? And at scale. Yeah. So that Stockfell methodology and saying, man, collaborative economies, don't ever think government is something separate to you. You are government, yeah. right? It's just like it's in pockets. Let's 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 get that grouped together and make it like a big thing. You know, that's one of the messages that still needs to come out because people don't know that they are government. Mm. People don't know what politics as a Greek word, what it means. Yeah, yeah. The running of the affairs of the city, city. which shouldn't be too one person or a group of people. A hundred percent. Your promised land as Moses is collaborative economies. Collaborative economies. And you're currently on the path <laughs> yeah, I think so. of parting the Red Sea <laughs> to take us there. Yeah, so we part, I think we parted the Red Sea um, when we... when we. Who's we? Um, We're still in 2017. Still in 2017. Sorry. I wake up that morning after the high. Yeah. I immediately know we have to start a crowdfunding platform to fund black businesses. I wake up the black door. businesses in particular. Black businesses in particular. The Israelites. The Israelites. Okay. <laughs> We're there, boy. We're there, boy. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I wake up immediately. At the time, I've got their numbers. We don't have a close relationship. Yeah. These two gentlemen I'm going to mention, yeah. right? We don't have a close relationship, but I've got their numbers. Immediately, I know uh, these are the two to call, mm. right? I first call Silebucho, Mulefo of Thad, right? Dr. Life's Good. Dr. Life's Good. I say, early Bukunshan. And I'm like, I can see he's also sleepy because I'm waking up, right? <laughs> like I'm sleepy. Like it's it's like, it's very early in the morning. Yes. I was like, sure. And he had an event the night before. I'm like, Mamela, um, 
let's start a crowdfunding platform um, for black businesses um, to fund, to create capital environments for black businesses. It's like, mm. cool. So yeah. to, sorry to pause there. So yeah. I know Dr. Life's good because I used to have a small trucking company. Mm. I used to transport his beanbags. Got you. Yeah. And then obviously with the hookup dinner, which mm. I, I'm not sure if you are going to explain it, but yeah. it was meant to be a place where entrepreneurs hang out 100%. and connect and meet each other because people wouldn't know as an entrepreneur, where do I go to find like-minded people? 100%. That's who Ulebo is. That's who Lebo is. Thanks for explaining. And yeah. that environment. So when I woke up, I knew Lebo the first person to call. Mm. Then the second gentleman I called, he started a platform on Facebook, yeah. right? Um, where basically black people were all fed up and coming together to come buy from black businesses. Sure. Um, Zuzugil. Um, Zuzugil Sony. Zuzugil Sony. Brown, Brown sense. sense. I call him and I say, hey, Joe, let's start a, a, a crowdfunding platform. Man, I don't have a relationship with both these, these people. Yeah, Do you yeah. understand what I mean? Ufugelo Umoya. Ufugelo Umoya. And Umoya said, <laughs> these are the people. These are the people, right? Uh, call them. Isn't that the, is it the story of Moses? The burning bush? It's just you weren't smoking weed. Yeah, uh, you were burning in fab. You were taking mushrooms. <laughs> and you saw a vision. Yeah, man. Okay. I've got a different perspective on it. Before it's I was fine. Christian. This is my, this is my pop little theory <laughs> as a non-Christian. Before, before, before I was Christian, I had the same theory. You were smoking weed. The burning bush is smoking weed. The the weed. Bush <laughs> is smoking weed. That's definitely <laughs> what it is. The climbing up the mountain <laughs> can be whatever you want it to be. Higher consciousness. <laughs> so why That's I, my theory. I'm sorry to all the Christians <laughs> out there. Why, why, why I have a different perspective on it now, man? Nah? Uh, I noticed it when I was reading the book of Matthew, which is like the gospel of Jesus, right? Mm. Why I have a different theory is that what we do when we read something that is so ridiculous, right? We put understandable theorems on it. 100%. And what I now have a perspective on is, ah, uh-uh, ah, that thing was a miracle, mm. right? And it should be kept in the category of miracle. If I want to explain it to the human mind, I've lost the plot of the Bible loosely. Okay? It's what I do, by the way, I think for a living. I mm. try to crystallize complex concepts mm. to be relatable to mm. you mm. so that you can accept it. Mm. Then once you've accepted it, then Luanda can come through and be like, but it was magic. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I don't uh, know, no. but I agree <laughs> with the principle. And you're like, okay. <laughs> 100%. Sure. Um, and that's important, you know. I was, I was kicked off brown sense, I think three times and then never <laughs> let back in. And every time I'd ask, I'd say, what did I do wrong? I used to be very controversial on Facebook back used in the day. I think I'm very mild now. I think I'm very mild now. People don't know me. People that only met me yesterday don't know. Don't know how... Brown Sense, there was a group called Independent Thinkers on Facebook. Mm. I used to blow heat on mm. religion, politics. Mm. My apologies. Silibuho, Mulefe, Mzuzugile Sony of Brown Sense. Mzuzugile already had a platform, Brown Sense. Brilliant platform. Brilliant platform. I think at the time it was at 170,000 people. Crazy. Right? Um, so we agree... Started off of, the People's Fund started off a phone call mm. with people I barely knew, mm. right? And if we want to use the word grace, that's grace. Yeah. You know, they agreed. They, they That's the guide. Grace, the better way of putting it is the guiding hand of God for your life. Okay. You know? um, which you don't, which you're saying is not luck. It's not grace. It's not here. Someone will be like, oh, I'm well, lucky. I'm you're lucky. like, no, it's God's hand and that guided us here. They guided us here. I hear you. 100%. Um, and... That journey starts, and from the beginning, man, like we started this thing, like I, I took 3,000 rand, and I loaned the business, right? Yeah. And the first campaign we did, right? When we launched, I'll, I'll go back to the, the preceding few months, right? First campaign we did when we launched, we've got three companies, right? It's Native Norsi, it's Walk Fresh, it's Tsepo the Gene Maker, mm. right? Um, this is 2017, right? Mm. Teppo, at the time, his popularity is growing. He's not Teppo now, like Teppo the gene maker yeah. now. Like, but his popularity is growing. Yeah. Litabo of Walkfresh, popularity is strong, right? Nobody knows Mukhadi from Native Nose, mm. right? We start the platform, we run the first campaign. So she runs a beekeeping company. Uh, Teppo makes jeans, Teppo the gene maker, and Litabo washes. This is as a digital marketer? A digital marketer. N- before the People's Fund? No, no, this is the People's Fund. First campaign okay, we're running okay. on the People's Fund. We're going to okay. crowdfund for them, right? Okay. Um, for various things. Did you guys have a meeting? You, Lebo, and Mrs. Yeah, Wheeler? we had like two meetings. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll come back to that. I want to come sure. back to that. There's something interesting that happened here. We launched the thing. There's 3,000 rand. That's just to set up the website, yeah. right? Um. And we make bets, right? By the way, I drink n- a native Norsi uh, when I shoot on the panel show. Nice. Because I work with Tutibu Khokibini, a black uh, 
production company owner mm. who's very passionately pro black. Yeah. Where's he parts? Where's he trip? Mm. Where's Sepo Jeans? Mm. Uh, vibes with DJ Spoo's idea on oh, black. Oh, so yeah. whenever people see me drinking tea there, uh, it's, it's normally Roy Boss with Native Nosy Honey. Native Nosy Honey. Yeah. Please continue. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. Um, uh, you call it Grace. Yeah, I call yeah, it yeah. Grace. Um, and then what happens is we launch the campaigns. We make bets, like, as internal people of the People's Fund, right? Yeah. Like, man, you know who's going to raise fastest? We're like, Tepo, because it's most popular at the time. Yeah. And second, I'm betting on Litabo. Sure. Because now there's a mentorship relationship that's building between me and Litabo. Yeah. Native knows, we're like, ah, man, we'll see. Just gamble. Yeah. Just gamble. Let's include let's, black woman let's, let's, for let's diversity. Gamble. Now, the weird thing is, God's hand of grace again. Yeah. Four years ago, I was running a company called Boxer Veg, right? Okay. We'd basically go to the inner city farmers. We'd collect a bunch of vegetables. We'd sell it online, right? Inner city farmers? Inner city farmers. The you ones... weren't getting them from city deep? No, 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 no. no. That came later. Okay. Because they ran out of supply. But we were inner city farmers, right? Sure. Who do were... they still exist? They still do. Okay. But, but they exist mostly from a subsistence perspective. They need help. I know I know Siakana Gardens mm. in Observatory. I know there's a gardening project close to your park. Yeah. In the CBD. Yeah. But these are some of the conversations. This is part of the collaborative economy work we need to do. 100%. And, man, they struggled with supply. But anyway, we used to deliver that. And the thing I discovered then was learning the abundance of South Africa, right? Yeah. Because I used to do the deliveries. I used to drive a red polo. Jeez. I, I wake up at 7 in the morning. We go pack the veggies and whatnot. I know, man, I'd get out of the house at 7 in the morning. Yeah. wake up at 5. Farmers don't wake up at... Farmers wake up at 4. No, like, no, no. I used to be at City Deep when yeah. I had a fish and chip shop. Yeah. In my white tears yeah. then. Stocking potatoes for my fish and chip shop. Hundred percent, and the economy is big. That economy is huge. Yeah, right. And we'd we'd, we'd pack, we'd pack. Then we had this app where they'd give us the deliveries all across um, Joburg, basically, yeah. right. And as I deliver, man, we'd sell like a bag of veggies, which would last you maybe a week, mm. right. And it was quite organic because it's organic farmers. Right? Yeah. In, We'd sell it for like something like two fifty, right? Which sure. is a sizable amount of money for a small bag of potato of, 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 of veggies, right? Yeah. Did they not buy them on subscription like crazy? It's a beautiful story. I know a couple of people who've been in that. I want to mention this lady just for as yeah. a bookmark for people to research. Uh, Lee Echo. Mm. Wa, wa, I think it's Waone. Yes. I might be pronouncing her surname wrong. Yes. W-A-O-N-E. She's done a lot of work is. in small farmers and doing this boxing yes. monthly box yes. veg type of concept yes. and Kirsten Harris and Ryan Dittman as mm. well who were also involved in something similar so I just want to bookmark yeah. so that in future we have these conversations because I've raised the names 100% and I'm those listening. are important names man so you're traveling and, you, and you're doing deliveries and, I'm and like, people are on subscription people are on subscription it's mostly white people I'm like oh white people love convenience and they love organic and yeah. they love they love that, that that you know like so when I'm talking to Mukhadi and convincing her to come on as mm. a crowdfunding campaign. I'm like, man, I see you've done some things here like in, 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 in the market, but it's very small because you're not accessing the white market. Mm. You, your market is white, right? Um, I know this because I used to do box of it. My market was white, yeah. right? They love the organic. And the story we can tell on beehives, beehives are part of the ecology of the world, yeah. you know, and they're on the decline. So we're doing the bets, right? <laughs> Who's going to raise the yeah. fastest Man, nobody's betting on Mukhadi because her popularity is lower than yeah. the other two. Did she not raise twice the amount before the campaign was done? Jeez. Like, it was ridiculous. It, it, was, it, was, it was crazy. What do you think people bought into? If have, they, have you ever done that breakdown? Because that becomes important as a growing business to 100%. figure out why is, Lil Wayne's Lollipop was, was such a crossover versus... Another track that you thought was going to blow up? 100%. So I think it's the merging of three different concepts, right? Okay. One is, you know, like KFC almost had it right with that two rand thing, right? Okay. We all want to do good, right? And feel like we're participants in the good. Yeah. But it, but it, in, a, in a way that's not inconvenient to us. Yes. Right? Yes. Two, we also care what. What's in it for us? Hundred percent. Right. We care what's in it for us, and the third thing is like, man, when those two things meet, you can think of them like 
what is the Japanese call it? Iki, iki, ikigai. Ikigai, yes. Yeah. It's one of the penalism principles. <laughs> That's why we're wearing black. This, this is grace. This, this is, is my grace. grace. <laughs> please, please hold it. No, it's my opinion. Please carry on. <laughs> um, ikigai, right? And um, the ikigai principle is like where you're good at, what you can be paid for and what you're passionate about, mm. right? It's four, it's four it's rings that four intercept rings. to find so your purpose. 100%, yeah. right? Um, and... Everyone's looking for meaning and purpose. Mm. Everyone wants to be sustained, sustainable and sustained, right? Yes. And everyone wants to give like to society. Like like we're all at our happiest when we're giving. Mm. To make an impact of to sorts. Make. So Native Norsi was like right at the intersection of that. Yeah. We we're selling beehives where people could own a beehive and they'd earn royalties as the mm, beehives. That's, that's ownership. That's, that's ownership. property. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. property. And they'd get a royalty for every bottle of honey we sold. Now, yeah. every bottle of honey you sell means there's a, hun- there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, let's call it a, a beehive. Yeah. That actually has a bunch of bees that are pollinating plants. Mm. So, I mean, she even started renting them out to farmers who needed um, to pollinate their fields, right? You take the beehives, you rent them out, they pollinate the fields, right? Um, that's, man, that's amazing work. Yeah. Like, like uh, you're, you're triggering thoughts in my head. So th- there are a lot of animals that through story, through the Bible, through the Lion King, we're taught to idolize and others that we, you know, the Lamb of God and the donkey and mm. the lions. And I, I do think the bees are undersold in the importance mm-hmm. of you know, society from a, a metaphoric perspective. Got gotcha. you. The idea of these workers that serve a big purpose, mm. that collaborate. Mm. Um, I think of even the story of Grameen Bank, mm. the story of Sahara Pariwa, uh, Subrata Roy in India. Mm. The idea of small people like worker bees collecting small amounts, yeah. like pollen, yeah. um, from small business yeah. owners, the moms selling and bringing, and, and number one, bringing this to a queen bee, we'll mm-hmm. call it the People's Fund, so that the People's Fund can do more for mm. the collective. Mm. I think that's such a, a beautiful metaphoric story. And and while you're on the bees and the property ownership, I don't know if at some point you'll touch on it. And if you're not, just a bookmark for people to research Untutukoshes and Livestock Wealth yes, yes. as well. Please, may you continue. Know, know them very well. Um, I will say, man, you know, sometimes we miss the analogies, right? Yeah. Of the idolization of animals, right? Like if you think about the promised land, yeah. right, uh, as described, because we're on the Moses metaphor, yeah. right? What were the promises of the promised land? Um, a land of milk and honey, yeah. right? And honey is produced from the from bees, bees from after the work has been done. So sometimes we miss it, right? Yeah. It's, it's right there saying, man, bees are important. There's for a this. theory that if we were to ever lose bees, society and the world would, would die. collapse. Nature would die. Fundamentally needs bees to exist. And and one of my favorite, if not my favorite series on Netflix is Black Mirror. Mm. And in Black Mirror, one of the episodes, it's got another meaning, but... It's a future in the world where bees no longer exist yeah. and we have to create mechanical oh, bees, bees yes. just to keep nature, nature. alive. Yeah, 100%. So Look. there's farmers that would get native Norsi to bring beehives so that they could pollinate the fields yes. for things to grow. Yes. Hectic. For food to grow. And we take bees for granted. We're just Very scared of the sting. So. <laughs> but these guys are putting in good work with Baba. Let me do my thing. I'm getting something here so that you can eat later. Just move out the way. Move Don't out bug the way. Me. Man, get out the way. We've got a saying in the company, yeah. and oftentimes when things have to get done, the thing that gets in somebody's way is themselves and sure. their ego, right? So in that context would be also like from a beehive perspective, right? There's a nice analogy to how we started this convo about the ego and that sort of thing. Is that, man, there's something important that needs to be done, but you're addicted to your aversion to pain, mm. right? You're addicted to your desire for pleasure. Right. These are the gods you were talking about. These are the little gods, right? Mm-hmm. And these little gods prevent you from the bigger picture being yeah. fulfilled, you know? Yeah. Um in fact, when we started, Livestock Wealth had was a year in. Um Beautiful. It was it was an interesting I've been studying you guys for long, man, and mm. I think I was meant to be a part of all of your journeys at some point, and at mm. some point it was almost there. But maybe grace, higher power, whatever. Um Maybe this was meant to be my journey so yes. that at some point we document and tell the and stories. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. There was a um, sermon I was listening to where people were being judged on how they'd worked in life, right? Yeah. This other guy was a lawyer. Uh, 
Jesus is like, man, I called you to be a priest. What are you doing? Ne? This other guy was a priest. He's like, man, I called you to be a lawyer. Look yeah. at all these people that are not saved. They're sitting in jail when they're supposed to be preaching yeah. to, to the masses. Then this woman comes up, right? Um, this woman, she's like, Ash, only thing I heard you call me for is to raise these three kids. Mm. Jesus is like, perfect. Look at these three kids. Through them, 60 million are saved because these three kids became preachers or whatever, yeah. you know? And it's like, play your, play your role. Yeah. You know, like, play your role. We all... We all want to be quarterback in some sense. Sure. Right? We all want to be the star player. The star Cristiano player. Ronaldo scoring the goals. <laughs> 100%. And sometimes, man, the thing we forget is Iniesta and Xavi mm. in the Messi story. You know? It's like, man, you don't have Messi without Iniesta and Xavi. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, man, like everyone must play their role. Yeah. You know? Now, we don't know what that role is. Um, because like now, you've got the Peñol platform. Yeah. Right? It's massive. You it's know? growing. It's small. It's like the people's fund at the beginning. <laughs> One year in. We'll be telling the story in no, six years. No, like it's quite, it's quite sizable, right? Um, in South Africa, love it or hate it, if you want to have an intellectual conversation, yeah. right? The first platform that comes to mind is the Peñol platform, right? Thank you. Um, Thank you for saying that. <laughs> it is. It is, right? Um, And it's got, and it's got Peniel's personality as well, so Ngasuga. No, no money, Ngasuga. I'm a, I'm a nice bloke. I uh, love it. Uh, Let's go back. Livestock World was a year in. Year in. And you guys, had, you'd put in 3,000 rand. You guys were betting on these three businesses yeah. and Native Nosi was That's literally the, delivering the honey. That's de literally delivering the honey, man. She was taking us to the promised land, you know? How so, are you guys launching? How are you guys crowdfunding? And, and what is crowdfunding? Got you. So we start this crowdfunding thing on a platform. We build a website. We use a WordPress theme. You see, like, one of the things that annoys me about entrepreneurship né, is that people like to dress up entrepreneurship, mm. forgetting it's primarily the delivery of value. Yes. Right? Um, doesn't matter what, what it's dressed in. Doesn't matter what suit it's wearing. Are you delivering value? Why is your email address Gmail? <laughs> Shut up. Let's, let's, let's move, mm. you know? Um, and one of the things we built is on a WordPress platform. In mm. fact, our website is still on a WordPress platform. Yeah. Right? WordPress is free. WordPress is free. Yeah. WordPress is free. WordPress is like a, it's called a CMS, which is a content management system, mm. right? Anybody in two days could learn how to build a web, WordPress website, right? Um, and I had been building WordPress websites. Even the website we did for BP. Yeah. I did it on WordPress. That's dope. <laughs> the app that was managing all of the receipts and whatnot. It was built on WordPress. Um, you guys are, you, you're giving away free game. Yeah. Th there's a lot of website builders <laughs> who use similar Wix, WordPress. Yes. And then at some point, I think there's a fee you pay to remove mm. whatever tag they have. 100%. And then they sell it to a consumer. But look, that's business. Yeah. That's entrepreneurship. Yeah. That's the gap. Yeah, that's that's the gap. Yeah. That's the gap. And we build it. And then, so I've got a background of building a bunch of stores. I sold, there's nothing I haven't sold online. Perfume, veggies, petrol, yeah. right? Um, you were being trained. Yeah. You were being trained, yeah. You get it. You, you, you're seeing the journey, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, as we build out these things, then we put it on a digital marketing platform, mm. which is my background, right? Digital mm. marketing. And at the same time, Thad is, is creating a launch event for this. The hookup dinner. The hookup dinner, right? Um, we have a, a conversation between Mzu, myself, Sizwe Zim, who's important. I'm going to mention him. Sizwe Zim. Sizwe Zim. Yeah. He's very important for the journey. I'll mention him in detail. Uh, we are having a conversation about what's the future of like crowdfunding and whatnot, mm. right? Because weirdly, ironically... Usilebucho, three months ago, he had started trialing crowdfunding on the floor of the hookup dinner. Yes, I'd attended two of those. Really? Yeah, you come in, you pitch, pitch, and then after pitching, they open to the floor. floor? If anyone would like to, to donate contribute. money, a website, free yes. advertising. Yes. Yo, <laughs> serendipity when you look. The dots connect backwards, man. Shout out to Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Steve, man. Um, We then build out... We then we build out this platform. So now we've got this platform that Silebucho has. Then we've also got Brown Sense. Mm. People are always looking to buy. A group of people always looking to buy from black businesses. Mm. right? When For people say, that don't know, by the way, Brown Sense is, or, or I'm not sure now, but it was a platform created so that black businesses can be supported. It was for mm. black, by black, to buy from black people and ensure that money circulates in the black circle. Something yep. that black people complain about. Even to this day. Yeah. I set up Pipe Black at some point, 2018, I think. Mm. I let go of that for my own reasons because I'm non-racialist. <laughs> Whatever. And I'm an atheist when it comes it's to race. Race, race now. <laughs> but well, please. You're agnostic when it comes to I'm race. I'm racially agnostic. <laughs> so I only see black clothes. <laughs> so, interestingly, most of the time I'm actually in black clothes. Love it. Um, 
One of the things that was interesting to your point to bring back this serendipity and playing your role, mm. 2015 or 16, after I, I tanked a business, right? Yeah. I, had, I started a platform called Buy Black, right? It had a website, it had everything. Do you know that's how Zoe and I met? It would make some, sense. Somebody told him, man, look at this platform. Yeah. And he was like, man, we could do more when we work together. I'm like, cool, let's set up some time, let's chat. We had like one or two chats, but nothing happened from it, yeah. right? Tanked, I tanked. But the, the relationship was, was, was started there. Was started there. Yeah. And then two years later, it's like, man, by the way, let's do this thing, yeah. right? And I had to move from building that platform to building this platform. Yeah. I hope it makes sense. You know? Yeah. Um, I hear you. So all they were hosting the hookup dinner, dinner, crowdfunding on the floor. Crowdfunding on the floor. And we're now going to launch the People's Fund. We talk about it and whatnot. And we say, man, this is the website, thepeople.co.za. 19th of July. 2017. I remember that day, yeah. right? Um, we launch. As we launch, man, it takes off. We're selling, at the time, we're selling honey. It's before the beehives, right? Mm -hmm. We're selling honey. It takes off, man. People are putting in 250, 1,000. Like, man, this is what we've been looking for. Yeah. Like, I want to be part of the change, right? Um, they're buying coupons for cleaning their shoes. They're buying jeans, type of jeans. I don't remember. I think we sold maybe like 100 type of jeans. I could be wrong. I Which think. is a lot. Yeah, maybe I'm counting wrong. Maybe it's 30. I don't remember. But it's a lot. It's a <laughs> it's lot. A lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Because um, you were selling a jean for 1002 at the time, yeah. right? Um, I even bought a jean. Oh, man. I will say it was the best fitting jean I've ever had. Still, by far, right? Um, Shout out to Tsepo. No, man. Like, Pogat. Pogat. Tsepo <laughs> yeah. uh, jeans, man. Like, he really delivered value mm. on his promise, you know? Similar to Litabo with the Walk Fresh, mm. right? It was really deliver value. And then also Mukhadi. And then we continued to start creating more campaigns, mm. right? Um, before I move on, Caesar Zim, big shout out. So when we started, um, we didn't have anything, right? Miss mm. Beskerez, mm. right? Caesar Zim was like brought into a meeting. We met at Lebu's place, yeah. right? It's me, Mzu, and Lebu, supposed to be the three of us, mm. right? Who Lebu invites Caesar to the to the thing, right? When he invites Caesar, I'm meeting Caesar for the first time. Yeah. But he's a creative, right? Mm. And I always get along with creatives. Like, I love creatives, right? Um, and he starts talking and goes, man, this platform could be really cool, right? And he's, as he's talking, then he starts creating our content, right? He did our first three videos. Mm. So I was planning to do the videos because I know how to do them, basically. Yeah. They're rubbish. <laughs> They're rubbish. <laughs> Man, he did our videos, right? It wasn't perfect because Sizwe, and also we had to nag Sizwe all the time. Yeah. Sizwe, Sizwe never delivers on time. Sure. <laughs> like it's one, of, one of the shortfalls of creatives <laughs> that they struggle with routine, <laughs> routine and. You know? Um, but man, oh man, the things he delivered. Yeah. Hey, hey. Goosebumps to now. Goosebumps to now. This the is, day you guys are doing like 20 million rand ads, you'll be like, this is dope, this but is fuck. Dope. Like we just was back in the day with nothing. Yeah, like, and man, there's this. I hope I don't offend anyone in my current team. There's this video we just released, right? Um, it's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> this is, but it's based on a different video Caesar did like four years ago yeah. when we were launching the Browns and Stockfell, which yeah. I'll come to, right? That video, even to this day, when I watch it, like I get goosebumps. Classic. Right? Like. Goosebumps. There's a lot of coffee copyright infringements. Don't get it wrong. Because that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's how you get things done, right? Sure. Um, but, yo, it was insane. Yeah. It, it was So to your point about when we make the 20 million mm -hmm. ad, right? This this ad we just did, it was decently priced, sure. right? Um, but that Caesar video, man, it, it, it had this organicness about it. I don't know yeah. how to put it. This one was planned. I don't know if that makes sense. Right? I hear you. Um, Yo, it was insane. Yeah. Um, so yeah, shout out to Cizwe. Um I still love that boy so much. Uh, yeah. Is he still a part of the team? No, no, no. He's not was he team. ever a part of the team? He was part of the team, but he disappeared quite early on. Uh, okay. Because um, that's the other thing about the, the business journey people don't understand. There's partners. Mm -hmm. We work together. There's investors who yeah. are just giving you money or yeah. space to work or whatever. There's contributors. Mm. Uh, they might be external. Yeah. I was there at the beginning. I gave them water. I mm. designed this. You weren't really a part of the team mm. like that. You were a service mm. provider. Mm. And over time, you could still be a service provider yeah. and get preferential whatever. Yeah. But, you know. 
Okay. So he was a part of the team at some point. He was a part of the team. And then he left. Yeah. Sure. Well, well, you could never get a hold of him. <laughs> that is, I love creatives. <laughs> creatives. Creatives, guys. <laughs> let me let me actually quick <coughs> to the creatives out there. I know like the idea of being on time and those things and diaries and it's tough. But partner with someone who fucking sucks at creativity. Sucks. But they're very meticulous. The reason why certain people get PAs or they get a partner, even in businesses, if you look at some of the most successful Silicon Valley stories, the guys come with different things. There's the wild guy mm. and then there's the guy who's like, while you're being wild, let me make sure that the contracts have been sent out, yep. the monies have been paid and, and so that we don't fucking get thrown out or the thing gets shut down, etc. Mm. So find, if you're creative, you don't need to kill your creativity. If you're not going to work on your time management and those things or your people skills and comms, find someone that you can work with who understands you and who can manage you and manage other people on your behalf. Gotcha. Sure. I 100% agree. Shout out to Caesar Zim. Shout out to Caesar Zim. I mean, I love that. He actually bought me a bottle of whiskey last year, late last year. Sure. Uh, and I was you like, were still drinking then? Are you uh, still drinking now? No, I don't drink now. I'm oh. still drinking on and off. Okay. But, but they're not drinking. Ne? That's not one of my gods. Does that make sense? You don't have an issue with the drink? No, I don't have an issue. Okay, with, no with, problem. Right, that's that's when I don't even have to quit. Cause, okay. Because okay. that's not one of my <laughs> little I hear gods. You. I hear you. Right? Like, so even it's got if I, no power over it's you. It's got no power. So even I if I you. take a bit, I take, it doesn't... It's whatever. It's whatever. Sure. C cigarettes, babs, food. Yeah, one of those three. Sure. <laughs> those are the ones that need to be managed. Cigarettes, food. <laughs> the other one, I don't know what it's about. <laughs> Please, may we continue? <laughs> um... Then we start the journey. We start building momentum, right? Yeah. We're going in. We're building campaigns. We're getting entrepreneurs in. We hit a capital block, right? What we, does that mean? We need more capital to move the platform forward. We're not running very profitably. Do you remember how much you guys raised for Mohadi, for the guys at that time in the early days? This is an important question for me because so many kids, uh, I want to start a, a chicken franchise. Mm. They look at KFC now. Yeah. And not KFC at, at the, the genesis beginning. and the inception. Uti, Colonel Sanders was selling, let's call it a street twice too, yeah. was selling three, <laughs> three of them of a them day. Yeah. So you should be gunning for three, three. or five a day, not Man, what they're doing now. Yo, that's so important, the thing you're saying, because I think in that first two months when we did the Native Norsi, uh, Tsepo, and Litabo, yeah. Yeah? I mean, we're celebrating with that first weekend we raised 12,000 rand. That's a lot of money. That's a lot. But like, in the context of the people's fund, like now we're doing, like we have a bad month if we do under 10 million. Do you understand <sighs> what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's important the thing you're pointing out because we were celebrating. We of were course. excited. We are like, yo, we did 12,000 rand. Sure. Like, this is insane. That's Facebook trending <laughs> on campus. <laughs> Shit. Did you see did the you what? See what? We're famous, boy. We're famous. And... Man, um, one thing I will say, like the six years, what it's brought back is that excitement again, yeah. right? Because um, there's a place you lose yourself in business when it's about the numbers, right? Unfortunately. This is why a lot of successful business people, even if it's for fun, mm -hmm. they try and find like young upstarts yes. to invest in. Yeah, They won't tell you because they do want you to succeed and mm -hmm. make money, but they're willing to lose the money. As long as to what you were saying about the reciprocation mm. and the love for your daughter. Yeah. Your existence mm. is enough. So mm. if I find a young, passionate, energetic mm. boy, girl who's like, this is going to be the biggest thing, thing in the, the world. world. You're like, whatever you, whatever say, you but say. I love your I energy. I love your energy. <laughs> and I'll, I'll fund you and mentor you mm. just to get this energy back. Because yep. when I go to my billion rand business, it's meetings, it's auditors, it's tick the boxes, it's ah. Yeah. You're keeping the ship afloat now. Yeah, yeah. You're not building That's what you were saying about, um, you spoke about the, you were speaking about campaigns mm. and you were saying the first three months yeah. when you're setting up are exciting. Exciting. And then it gets boring mm. when it's now just maintenance. 100%. And, sure. It's maintenance. Like now it's maintenance. Yeah, yeah. And there's somebody you have to bring in for that. Yeah. Google recognized that. I don't know if you've ever read, uh, I forgot the book, but Google recognized that very early. The two guys? The two guys. Sergey and Larry. Sergey and Larry. They're not the best CEOs for a company. So mm. they brought in Eric Schmidt, right? Sure. Who's like, man, I'm an adult. I'm going to run this thing like an adult, right? You guys I'm not going to be smoking weed and unavailable like with Caesar. <laughs> man, can we leave Caesar alone? Because like, that's you, my boy. You were throwing shade at Caesar. Sorry. <laughs> take Caesar, it back. I take it Caesar, back. I love like you. Creatives, like, like creatives. Like creatives. Like creatives. 
Excuse me. I want you to know that what I meant is that I miss you. <laughs> Do not listen to Penuel. <laughs> Sorry. They realize that, look, we're going to suck in the meetings and yeah. the hotel. So bring in Eric Schmidt. Let's put them in, 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 in X, right? Mm. They, let them stay in X, in the innovative part of the thing. Eric Schmidt run the company, yeah. right? And it's important for everyone to play the role because sure. if they're not in X, Google is not innovating. It's not yeah. creating new things, yeah. right? So in the same way, in that first a uh, few months where we ran the campaigns, I think we raised in total maybe like 150,000, right? Jeez, this is the People's Fund at the beginning. At the beginning. It's a like, lot of money, bro. It's a lot of money. But in context now, it's like, oh man, it's a lot smaller. Because mm. um, the first year we did in total, we did like a 1.2 million. That's right? a lot of money. You know, you know, I say it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for, for, a, for a startup. For the story of the People's Fund and the story of the Promised Land and collaborative mm. economies, it's the... A 2,000 rand being given to a kid that wants to start a car wash mm. is a lot. Mm. The 5,000 rand for the guy who wants to start selling chicken dust. Yeah, yeah. The, um, so 150,000, mm. depending on the business you want to start, a small gazebo with hair yeah. clippers, yeah. you can open however many of them. It's, 100%. it's insane. It's, it is, man. And weirdly, with the three that we were funding at the time, right? One wanted to put in security features for their thing. What was Tepo? That was Walk Fresh. I don't remember what Tepo was trying to fit. I think it was buying a new machine, if I'm not mistaken. Because that's also important for crowdfunding, for people that don't know that. When you're crowdfunding, there's a specific thing. The people mm. that have watched Dragon's Den and yeah. Shark Tank, what do you need money for? Yeah. I need money to buy a machine. Mm. I need money to do this so that I can scale in this way. 100%. And Mukhadi needed new machinery for... Um, uh, I want to call it it's cold pressing, but it's basically how you prepare the honey, right? Okay. So that it's it's ready to go into the bottles and all of that stuff. Okay. And they bought that equipment. It was so exciting. Like I still get goosebumps when I remember watching them install the things and put up videos, put it for the crowd so the crowd could see this is the new stuff that we got. It was like, man, this means something, yeah. right? We do more crowdfunding campaigns for that. Like, this is asset-backed financing, right? Let me differentiate quickly. So, asset-backed financing is basically saying, think of how your car functions, mm -hmm. like how car financing works. You buy a car, the bank says, I'll give you the loan. Yeah. But you will not hold the lease to the car, right? Or the, 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 the ownership. ownership. The, the ownership, ownership will be with the bank. With the bank. You get right of use. Right of use, yeah. right? Then as you use it, um, once you've paid me back, now you get ownership back to you like yeah. full ownership yeah. right um we took that same mechanism and made it simple and we said own a beehive own sure. a xyz right um and ownership of the beehive is that will pay you a royalty right mm -hmm. so you come in with your thousand two hundred rand that's what we're selling the beehives for mm -hmm. you'll get a royalty every time they sell honey mm -hmm. right we started replicating it across other businesses there was Stimela breweries there was um they, they sold beer, right? Okay. Ah, oh, man, it was delicious beer. Were you guys only offering money? Not like, look, don't take money. You might get some honey. Hey, so that take came... money, take some honey. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. Uh, you did say you want to record a rap song. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon. Coming soon. Um, so there were instances where people swapped out money for things like honey. Right. Okay, because I'm thinking like I was triggered by the breweries. Yeah. Yeah, hey, but don't pay me. When I let you be here, let you be here. Man, I can do be here. Let's be here. And we did that like for almost a year, right? Mm. This is 2017 to 2018. 2017, 2018. Yeah. The thing that kept on nagging in the back of our ears, entrepreneurs coming to us, going, "Man, I don't need assets. I've got an order, right, yeah. from corporate or government. Mm. I need capital to execute on that sure. order." Like they kept on nagging, We're like I assume I'm a tend, you know, mm. like because we've got that PR perspective of tenders, right? Sure, of course, like, like ah, tenders are corrupt. We don't want to be associated with, with these that, dirty things. With these dirty things. It keeps nagging, keeps nagging. The first one we did was a transnet order, mm. right? We eventually say, okay, let's try it out. Now we're trying it out with our own money, right? Mm. Not with the crowd's money. We try it out with a gentleman called um, Paloma Rumo. Mm. Yeah? He's from a company called Zucha Africa, mm. who would later become one of our shareholders in the okay. People's Fund. So we keep trying to collaborate, right? Zucha Africa is basically like a collective of, like, um, think of it like doctors and professionals who came together. They each bought a share, right, in the company, and then the intention was to buy into industries. So there's they, a there's a there's a story. I don't I don't know if I don't know if Tebe Investments is part of the story. There's these stories of what Dr. Wiseman in Kuhu mm. and these professionals back in the day who came together and they've built amazing businesses, yep. some of them. And I know 
because uh, I've uh, counseled a couple of groups um, where it's a bunch of professional guys. Mm. A lot of them fizzle out, but a lot of them have these wishes of we're professionals, we're upper middle class or rich or, yeah. or low rich. We have a little bit of extra money. We, we're not going to, like your old lady, put in 500 rand. Yeah. We can actually do 5,000. Yeah. Maybe 10,000 yeah. as a collective want to invest in something. Mm, mm. Okay. So it's, it's beautiful a, stories. Exactly the same concept. They okay. did that. They actually insured. Zucha Africa. Zucha Africa, which, as the name says, like Rise Africa. Yeah. Right? The insurance now, they're in construction. They've actually got a bunch. I think I dreamt about them last night, weirdly, on their construction project. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, man. They, life, they're doing big things. They're doing sizable things. Okay. Right? Um, um, and one of the things is. We agreed to do the first contract. We do it. It pays back. Do you remember how much it was? 56000 Oof. Okay. Was and I wanted to ask, um, you said we were using our money and not the crowd's money. Yeah. Who was your crowd at, at that time? Um, crowd was majority white people. <laughs> In the first year? In the first year. Not yeah. people from Brown Saints? No. Funny story. Not people about from the hookup dinner? They were there, but like, think about it like this the hookup dinner, yeah. right? A lot of the people who would contribute, right, mm. are from companies and things like that. And some of them would be white people, okay, right? Like, we forget that about the hookup dinner, yeah. right? Um, and then we did a lot of digital marketing, like online marketing, sure, which is total strange. Just saying, I, 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 I mess with this thing, yeah. right? Uh, so I'm gonna use a different word. That's another one of my gods, uh, swearing. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, I don't swear that much anymore. Um, so it was a majority white people, and especially because they were chasing the native Norse narrative, right? With the ecology of beehives and yeah. all of that stuff. There was a participation by black people, right? But it was very low. So you know what happened? I'll tell you. I want us to speak about this before you carry on with the. That's the thing I'm with the story of Transnet and the fifty six thousand yeah, order. That's what. This is the funny story about okay. it, right? We we start in July. We're crowdfunding for black businesses. Mm. There's a near non-existence of black people on participation, right? Okay. In October, I'm, also, I'm, a, I'm about to sing the songs. Man, black people don't support each other. Sure. I'm about to sing that song. Yeah, yeah. Um, October, a lady calls me, says, man, we saw that you're selling uh, beer taps that we can invest in, yeah. right? Uh, we've got a stock fell. Could you come talk to the stock fell? And see if they'll participate, man. Mm. Stockfell doesn't exist anymore, that Stockfell, right? So sadly. I go, okay. Sadly. I go talk to them, but it's an investment Stockfell. I go talk to them, explain how the opportunity works, blah, blah, blah. And then, I don't think too much of it. Like, mm. I'm not expecting them to buy. I'm sure. like, man, this is part of sales. Yeah, yeah. They're like, when I'm done talking, they're like, yeah, we'll buy a full beer tap. Beer tap is 37,000 rand. Did my lights not go woom, woom, yeah. woom, woom? We're doing this wrong. Yes. To your question earlier, right? Black people, we don't do crowdfunding. Since it's fair. Hundred percent. And to this day, Stockfell's many of them are hungry. Yes. For, for investment opportunities. opportunities. I'm like, oh man, we're doing this wrong. It's not because black people don't want to support each other. We've gone and spoken to black people, like white people. Yes. We said crowdfunding. Immediately after I leave that thing, I call the gents. Mzuno label. Mm. I put it actually. We had a WhatsApp group. Yeah. Like guys, we need to start the Browns and Stockfell. Like immediately. I'm like, oh man. And the guys ask me what for. I'm like, man, we have to start a Browns and Stockfell. Mm. Black people are not participating, not because they don't want to participate. The mechanism we're using is white. Mm. Like I'm saying, we're creating something for black people, but we're still talking to them like white people. Yeah. We need to start a Browns and Stockfell. And the end objective of that Stockfell is that what do black people want more than anything? A black-owned bank, mm -hmm. right? And what we'll do is, in the interim, while we're building out that black-owned bank, it will invest in sure. projects to make a return. Shout out to Ntabeleng uh, Di Khotsi <laughs> and the guys at YW YWBN. BN. Even yeah. though their journey on the mutual bank has been stalled, mm. and she said she'd speak to me at some point when certain things have been sorted out, but the fact that they look like they'd pushed further than other people. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They had pushed quite a distance, yeah. you know? And they were like, oh man, let's do this. But, and, and in fact, one of the things we were pulling on was watching YWBN. And we're like, okay, but this one is for professionals. Because yeah. like, they need 10,000 Rand and 1,000 Rand. And I think at some point it was for women. Yeah, it was for women. I but, think. But men could participate. Loosely. But I don't think that was popular. Yeah. So it's almost like we want something more inclusive, more but inclusive. for black people that don't have to be professionals. They don't have to be professionals. Because yeah. they were asking for like 10,000 and I think it's a thousand per month or something like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of money. A lot of money. We're like, 
Man, we've got the digital platforms to do it at 100 rand per month. Mm. People can contribute to 100 bucks. We start the Brownson Stock Fell in November. For on the, the platform? On, on Facebook? On Facebook. Yeah. On Brownson. And then we use Stock Fell. Sure. Um, With such a small community, man, we need to have like a gala dinner or something and mm. all catch up, find out how we're doing, doing and see where the gaps are. 100%. Shout out to Sepum Loy and Stockfeller as well. Stockfeller. We start that platform. In three months, I think it becomes the biggest contributor to the People's Fund. That's dope. Like after me about to sing the songs, man, black people don't support each yeah. other. November 2017, we start the People's Stockfell. Up until, I'll tell you a story about that uh, when we close it out, right? Yeah. Or what? Because uh, we were planning to be a full-on mutual bank, commercial sure. bank, right? Um, we moved up all the way to CFI. And then last corporate financial institution. Co sorry, corporate Cooperative financial institution. institution. Yeah. Um, and then last month we decided, man, let's focus our attention on like it, at least from our side on the people's. Last side. month you're talking now? Now, now, last okay. month we okay. decided. Listen, um, I'll, I'll come to the details of that. Okay, like we detail. can also chat about it even if it's offline. These are things I'm extremely passionate about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll come to the details. It's very important. Um, it raised in its existence. Yeah, four million. Really? Four million. The brown sand stock fell? Yeah, the, which became the people's stock fell, right? And became a CFI. Jeez. It's four million. Four million. I'm a clipper. The clipper is 100 rand. 100 rand. Yeah. The clipper. Um, it raised four million. It was, it was, quite, it was quite the time. Um, it was quite awesome, actually. Yeah. Um, and that's when we discovered that, man, talk to people like... The way they want to be spoken to. Yeah. Guys, join my savings club. What's that? <laughs> What's that? Hey. Oh, I'm going to fair. Ah, okay. I can pack it. 100%. And, yeah. if, and you probably saw that language um, in, our, in, our, in our, let's call it our prospectus yeah. business plan. Is that the thing that the People's Fund ended up figuring out is how to talk to black people like black people. That's our USP. Quick bookmark. Um, your advertising, your marketing to this day, do you guys focus on language? Yes. By language, I mean yes. Isi Zulu, Isi Zulu, Sutu, Kosa. Yes. Like our focus is completely, man, you must know you're talking to a black brand, not okay. a white brand that's trying to be black. Okay. You know? Um, okay. You must know your home. I don't know if you're done before we speak about the Transnet order. Yeah, I'm done. I just you. wanted to ask if up until that point, was the majority still white people and outside of the Bronson stock fell, the people stock fell, what is your general feel on black people joining such initiatives, starting. Why do white people join you guys? Why do they put money in? Are you guys a sellout? Are you guys fronting? Um, where are we missing it? Because the old mutuals, the these big companies, the Sunlams, the, the outsurances today, they are billion, probably billion dollar mm. businesses now. And the bulk of it is from black money. Yep. But when black people want to start these things, I mean, old mutual started with a few guys in the mm. Cape. Many of these other stories start, why do black people seem to struggle when you come up with something new to be like, we will be the next old mutual and be black? Yeah. <sighs> oh, man, you're asking me about 30 years of, well, 100 years of conditioning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, there's multiple layers to that question. The first thing is, one, when we notice the Stockfell effect versus the individual white people investing effect, yeah. right? Um, take th take this from where it comes. White people are very comfortable investing as individuals, right? Okay. And and maybe they also have more disposable income to 100%. play around with. Hundred percent, right? But like, does this make sense to me as an individual? Ne? Um, as a white person, yeah. right? Oh, I like this. I'm gonna put in a thousand rand. Yeah. I can test with a thousand rand yeah. to your disposable income thing. Tina, as black people, one. There's something we never touch on, which is important. Mm. Amongst the races, um, black people have a 25% financial literacy rate, which means one in four people who are black mm. have some level of understanding of finance. Mm. If you compare that with the Indian or white people, I think it's closer to 80% or 90%. So we're firstly not comfortable with finance. Let's start there. And it's it's traumatic. It's traumatic. When you say money, debit orders, it's, debt, it's, credit card. It's very traumatic as a concept. By the way, that's a gap in the market. That 25% to 80, 80 because that's a gap for people to teach. 100%. Whether it's for free and then you make money, money through ads. 100%. Or whether you're charging people. Huge. Financial literacy. And it's we'll speak about it as a race now. Mm. But 
white people, Indians, need to have a vested interest mm. in black financial literacy. Yeah. Because if black people become financially literate, they can go make more money overseas yep. and bring it back yep. so that the white and Indian businesses can blow up as well. 100%. Can mushroom. Sorry. <laughs> can <care>. mushroom. <laughs> sorry. Um, the literacy rate's 25%. 25%. The and then where there is literacy, um, man, the toughest thing to... Shit, oh, okay. Shit. Wait, how much time do you have left? Uh, look, it's also a form of excitement, I guess. We're good to go. My apologies. We'll pick up from... Uh, I will just make that last comment on uh, financial literacy and that it's a gap in the market. Yeah. Um, so there's obviously a gap in the market because the 25% of black and then the Indians and whites... Um, they have 80%. And I'm hoping people will come in and find ways to educate black people because it will have a benefit for, for the entire country. 100%. And maybe black people should become the solution to that, right? Yeah. Um, those of us who do have a financial background, right? Sure. And literacy thing. In fact, funny enough, we were running an exercise in the company. So the People's Fund, for example, um, because we so truly believe in black people being spoken by black people, right? We're a finance company. Yeah. We have almost no one in the company with a finance qualification, right? Okay. I was running an exercise like past month where from grassroots, mm. basically training people within the company, how the existence, the ascent of money, like why does money exist, yeah. right? Um, so that it becomes ingrained in their psychology because the thing we love most about them, they can talk to people, sure. right? You train them on what do we do? talk to people, yeah. right? Um, now it's going, man, we're starting a, a whole campaign, which we'll probably have to find time for, right? To yeah. discuss in detail. Um, you're going to get asked a lot about this campaign. Mm. So let's go to the grassroots basics of how does money work, yeah. you know? The Ascent of Money, Neil Ferguson. Yes. Amazing book, amazing documentary for those that are lazy to read. On YouTube, it's there. Mm. The Ascent of Money by Neil Ferguson. Yep, Sorry. yep. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful mm, description. Yeah of how money works yeah. in its in its most basic form. So remember earlier I was talking about give me a second. Earlier I was talking about the space time continuum. Yeah. So I've got a mathematical background. Um my mind sees money in the same way like the space time continuum works. Right. Okay. So it's so hard to explain this. Give it a give it a shot. I'll try help. I'll try help. Ne? Think about when Einstein came up with the theory of relativity. Yes. Ne? His mind had to conceive space and time in such a way that he could explain how they interlink to each other. Mm. Right? And then you eventually get the E equals MC squared, right? yeah. which is one of the most famous formulas in history. In the same way, like I for whatever reason, God blessed me with the ability to see money the same way. Mm. And how it relates to time. And I'm not even talking just like compound interest, the basic concept. I'm talking about they are intertwined to those two things, time and money. They are Have you listened to Jewish people speaking about money as a spiritual concept? Mm -mm, mm -mm. So they speak about the spiritual concept, which I'm not going to touch on. I'm going to touch on this aspect that when you give someone one rent mm. that you've worked for, mm. you're giving them a piece of your, your time, time and a piece of your life. Yep. So... Most people, especially people who are beggars, mm. grant recipients that don't have a, an understanding of value and money and numbers, they don't understand the concept of the relatability and the and the linkage to yep. numbers. So mm. I link it to numbers. Mm. Um, that's why I'm like, one of the issues, you speak about maths, some people might speak finance, money. I believe a lot of black people struggle with money mm. because they struggle so with numbers. numbers. Yes. That they don't show up on time and we mm. have a joke about mm. African time. Mm. They struggle with numbers when it comes to certain things. So by the time money comes in, they already have a bad relationship with numbers. Mm. And they need to understand that money is a function of, let's say, time. Yep. I'm going to need to put time in mm -hmm. or I'm going to need to get someone else's time. Yep. If someone is giving me, and, and um, Justin Timberlake, In Time is a concept movie where money is not money the way yes. we know it. But, but it's, it's in time. time. Yeah. So that maybe that's a good way to link the, the time, numbers, and money. Go watch the movie In Time, mm. Justin Timberlake. I remember but, that But movie. the numbers thing is very important for me. It's very important. And then the time thing, you know why it's important, man? Um, when you, the, 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 the one beautiful thing about money, right? Yeah. 
it's got an exponential functionality where if you create more value in this moment in time, you can make a future moment in time extract more value in, in the form of money, right? Okay. So... Give a, give a basic example. Yeah, I, I buy to, a house and I, it earns me rental income in the future. Yeah. Something yeah, like that? Some, something like that, okay. right? It's that if I take... So think about it like this. We all have... Currently, we've all got uh, earnings value. Okay. This is how much... Potential. You, not even potential, real, okay. right? This is this is how much I made this month, mm. right? Um, let's say gross, right? Yeah. Like either in my salary or in my business, right? This is my gross salary. Mm. So now I've got a value, a number value. A number. A number value on my minute. How much does my minute cost? Yeah. Right? So if I if I have a business that's worth 10,000 rand, that, that makes 10,000 rand a month, yeah. right? Let's let's say we've got ten hours <laughs> to make the, the sure to make or, it easy or hundred hours, right? Yeah. Um. Each hour of mine is worth a hundred rand, yeah. right? If I in that hundred rand hour, instead of selling the usual hundred rand worth of stuff, mm. right? What I do is create a, a multiplier effect where I build maybe a website. Maybe I'm 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 selling all my things like by myself. Mm. I create a website in that hour. I don't get the sale for a hundred rand, mm. but what I do get is now I've created an exponential. I can get a hundred rand every minute yeah. through the website, yeah. right? I, st- I take another um, hour. Mm. I create a digital marketing mechanism, right? So that now I don't have to go talk to people about my sales. Mm. The system can do that, right? Now I've created another hundred rand per minute, mm. right? What I've done is now <laughs> moved from a hundred rand per hour earning potential to let's say 10,000 rand yeah. an hour earning potential, right? That's the only difference between money and time is that you can create time, money. Do you understand what I mean? So which creates time, which this, is weird as a concept. This <laughs> might be this might be a, a conversation we'll need to have another time. Yeah. So my currency of choice is human beings mm-hmm. and particularly human minds, yeah. which is why <laughs> I, have, I have penalism to try and colonize <laughs> and hack minds. Um, at some point I realized... Let me say, more than land, more than property, more than money. At some point, I had an epiphany where the point of making what we call active income, yeah, which is what you speak about, the earning value, mm. is so that you can earn what they call passive income, yeah. which is people say it's making money without working. Yeah, That money that you make working is so that you can then buy other yes. people's time. Yes. So yes. that in future. Yes. And that's... I think for some rich people, the only reason they try to make money so that they can buy more human beings' yes. time. And if you can buy a human being's time in such a way that I will buy a month of yours, mm. then next month, how much do you cost? 20000 Cool. I'm going to buy you next month. I'll mm. even pay you up front. Mm. This happens with record deals where they put in advance. Yeah. yeah. I'll buy your next month 20000 You're going to work for me mm. for however many hours. And then I structure it in such a way that you make me 60,000 mm. rand in that. Yeah. So that in retrospect, you pay yourself. Yeah. I can take an extra train and go buy another, another. human being to mm-hmm. do the same. And then I can make 20,000 for myself to enjoy. Yeah. And that's the entire concept. And that's why even the idea that when I'm giving you money, I'm giving you some of my life. Yeah. Uh, I'm giving you some of my life. But you can play around with the concept of money whereby you can get other people's time. Yep. And that's where now the concept of I'm being exploited, yeah. I'm being underpaid, it means you are giving me less for my time than I think I'm worth yeah. or that I'm delivering and it becomes a, a debate and a negotiation. Anyways. And, and, and the, the dilemma with that debate and negotiation, right, is um, actually our lens on the world, right? Yeah. Is that um, when capital structures work, like, let's not get it twisted, right? Capital structure, by what I mean by capital structures is that if I'm going to plow my investment into something, mm. right? I've created an infrastructure for the thing to happen. Sure. You're participating in that thing happening, right? When you say, I'm I'm being undervalued in this, right? Okay, let's remove my capital structure. You go create that capital sure. structure and go do that thing. You sound right? like a capitalist. I do sound this like a capitalist. This is why people don't like you guys. <laughs> I'm worried about this conversation because I wanted us to go back to the Transnet order uh, we'd spoken we'll about financial literacy. Sorry, this was on financial literacy, which is no, 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 one we'll of be, my passionate We'll, we'll be quick topics. on this one. It's important. No problem. It's, no Im- problem. it's very important yeah. for framing our minds because we like to position ourselves as victims, right? Of course, and that we're worth more than we, we think we are. We, 
everyone thinks this of themselves, sure. right? And it's like, man, go do the same thing. I heard motherfuckers saying they made hope. <laughs> go make another hope. Go make another hope. Go make another hope. Sure. Um, but you pull. You pull the business. Yeah. I'm the evil guy. Go. You do it. And never mind big business. You go run this puzzle shop. And it's like. And it's like. And it's like it's not intended for it to be malicious or anything. It's intended for truth. Sure. That you're not interacting very well with truth. Yeah. You're interacting with your own ideals about yourself, yeah. right? Relationships that work well is where I know I have no interest in building these capital structures, right? I do have an interest in delivering value and getting paid for it decently, 100%. right? Um, and it's weird. As I describe this, I think about, like, for example, the People's Fund, right? Mm -hmm. Um we pay we pay really well, like above market rates, right? Jeez. Like really well. Do you guys take CVs? I think I still have one somewhere. <laughs> I'll send it through. We, we we when I say we pay really well, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna make you wealthy. It's not it's not intended to do that, yeah. right? But it's it's better than what generally the market pays, mm. right? And we keep trying to balance that out, right? Sure. Um in that perspective, yeah. right? Um because we do think you're quite valuable. So to your point about people, okay, we don't <laughs> we don't think they are currency, right? <laughs> no, cu currency is good English, but it's basically saying you are valuable. A hundred percent. When someone says I'm a high value man, 100%. high value, that's a currency. It's not monetary. It's not meant to be, but that's what I meant. A hundred percent. I mean, currency, though, when I think of, if you think of a cent of money and whatnot, like yeah. when you think of currency, you think of stock, sure. right? So that's why I was like, eh, let's move from that word. Sure. Let's, let's, I hear you. you know what I mean? I hear you. Um, but you are in intrinsically valuable, mm. right? Um, and in many parts, I would call us the yin and yang of that same concept, right? Mm. In many parts, the People's Fund is a belief in that. It's in the belief in the ability of human beings, mm. right? It's the People's Fund. It's called the People's Fund. It's about people. More than money, what's important yeah. is people and how people are interacting with themselves and the world, yeah. right? So th 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 that, that brings it to that accountability thing that's around Hey, before you say I'm worth more than this, mm -hmm. right? Demonstrate it. Like, demonstrate it. You know, like, we're not going to... Life is not a handout, man. Sure. You it know? never was. Even before money came in. Yeah, life is not... Even in the wild. Yeah. Like, it never was. You build, man. Yeah. You, you, you'll, you'll have serendipity, grace, and all of those things where yeah. some people are predestined to have certain things work better for them. But we all have to work, mm. you know? Um yeah, so sorry. Yeah. Uh, financial literacy, we'll speak about it again, but it's a it's a passion topic for me. Yeah. So you guys have been funding small businesses that need certain things, asset backed funding. Yeah. And then these guys, it's Oka Africa come and they're like, Look, we've got a, a what's it called? A purchase purchase so, order. So 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 the purchase order comes from a random entrepreneur. Is that a tender? Know. It's a tender. It's a tender. Why do you guys call it purchase order? Is it to run away from the word tender? Because it's no, been no, uh, no, 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 no. That's not the intent at all. It's because the exact document we're looking for is actually a purchase. It's called order. a purchase order, right? Okay. Um, you guys gamble with fifty six thousand of your own money. Own money. Um, in fact, when I say own money, Palo from Toka Africa gave us the fifty six thousand, right? Um, so we get. I don't understand. So. Palo came to you looking for money. No, 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 no. Oh. Some entrepreneur look, came, oh, to, came okay. to us looking for money. Okay, right? okay. And they need to deliver some goods to Transnet. And then Tuha Africa came to give you guys? Yeah, so Palo came and I okay. said, Palo, listen, we're going to split the fee. We're going to share the fee. Sure. Like we've done with the, with the crowdfunding and whatnot. Yeah. We need X amount of capital yeah. um, to do this. Like, okay. Like, you know, but like, he, he's one of those people who are deep believers um, in in buying black and, and, and enabling the black yeah. um, mass yeah. to, 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 to self-determine yeah. and whatnot. Um, and it's like, cool. But you can see it's like a little uncomfortable. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's uncontrollables mm. when it comes to delivering to a government okay, department or state-owned enterprise. Yeah. Great entrepreneur, great guy, religious, <laughs> lovely boy. Everyone trusts him, but he has to it's wait what? for his department run by hyenas <laughs> and wolves to, to pay. pay. And that yes. now makes you cringe. It makes you cringe. Um we do that first purchase order and it works. Yeah. It works. I do the maths, <laughs> right? I do the maths. I'm like, it pays in, I think it pays in like 33 days, yeah. right? I'm like, whoa, hold on. We put out 56,000. We got paid something like 62,000, something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, like, hold, hold on. You sound like me when I got into my loans, <laughs> Mashonisa business. Mashonisa business. So the serendipitous 
incident I'm thinking about is when I was in high school, I used to save money. First year of high school, before the girls and the booze, right? <laughs> <laughs> I used to save money. And my mother told tells one of her fr- one of her friends, Mam Zoto, um, rest in peace, she passed away. She comes to my mother in Mpara week and she's like Nani? Hey, Mampara week, it's the week before you get paid, right? It's called Mampara week. It's called Mampara week. <laughs> <laughs> so people who earn the 25th, it's like from the 20th, right? So in the space-time continuum, that week is the longest <laughs> week, week in the month. <laughs> in the month. That's to understand space-time it. continuum, it's that. <laughs> it's that. There's a week that is longer than other weeks. <laughs> because time moves very slowly through that week. <laughs> um, and basically, she's telling my mother, and then my mother says, or my middle, she calls me by my middle name, my yeah. mother. Um, most of the people I grew up with were from very. You know, I look at her. Hey, your mom's pimping out your uh, money. Pimping out my money. I'm, it's the 20th or something like that. 20th? Yeah, it's about the 20th. She's getting paid on the 25th. Mm. She's like, and then 500, I'm like, 500. I'm like, cool. Yeah. I'll give it to you for 750 back. Ark. Right? This is in high school. High school. Grade 8, I'm 12. Jeez. <laughs> um, I'll give it to you, that 500, because I've saved them 100 rand. I used to get like 180 in allowance. Jeez, shout out to your parents, bro. You were rich. Brad, it, 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 I'm, not, I'm not that old, so it's not that rich. So inflation was oh, really inflation. High. Okay, okay. <laughs> take it back, take it back. Um, anyway, I was saving basically like 100 rand a month, mm-hmm. right? So I've got like this 500 sitting there. She's like, yeah, I'll pay you back because in her head, 250... Oh, it's change. Now you're speaking about the loans business. Yeah. 50% but interest it's, on 50,000. It's very different from 50% interest on a 500 rand. It's a psychological it's a thing. Psychological this thing. is the psychology of money. And then she's like, cool. I'm like, Man, what? You just made me 6,000% return on capital annualized. Do you understand what I mean? Because you just gave me 50% in five days. If yeah. I annualize it for the whole year, it's like, yeah. it's ridiculous. The same lights came on. When we did that purchase order and paid back days and 33 days, like 10% on 33 days, I was like, hold on, hold on, we could be doubling money every year here. I've got a, I've got a, a business idea which I hope to collaborate with people on, which mm-hmm. has to do with is fancy terms, money remittance, mm-hmm. money transfer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I will PayPal and crypto have done a lot in, mm-hmm. and I want to collaborate with puzzle shops. Mm-hmm. Turning them into distribution outlets and money remittance uh, agencies. Yeah. Because I, as a loan shock at the time, would do the calculation of 30 days. Yeah. And then in that 30 days, I'd be like, hey, 20% or 40% mm. in 30 days. I was like, the money remittance guys, the shop right money transfer, because they know the average, like e wallet. They yeah. know the average they send out. Mm. So they don't mind the guys sending more because there's a few of them. Yeah. But they might be making on average 10% per person sending sure. money. That's not 30 days. Mm. That's not five days. Mm. That's now. Now. I've just made 10% if mm. the average person is sending a thousand rand at a hundred rand fee, as got an you, example. Got you. And you're like, nah, this, but they've created, they've put in the barriers in mm. place. I think in the interest of time, we've got five minutes left. We're going to have to pick up yeah. a part two. A part if two. that's fine. Yeah, no, that's fine. I think the point I want to close out on that. But anyways, this is the introduction into purchase order financing. Um, yeah. And you introducing us to Tsukha Africa, one of your partners. They would become And then we'll probably pick up from there after you after you close off now. Yeah. So one of the things we I picked up on is we charge that guy a percentage of his profits. Yeah. Right. Now, I've never been in business trying to be exploitative personally, sure. right? Um I've always wanted to be collaborative. Sure. Right. Like an Indian. <laughs> how, how much you got, my friend? <laughs> you walk away happy? I got a discount. I got he a walks discount. away after his calculator being like, I made margin. Yeah, I made margin. And we the guy had a decent amount of profit. Yeah. Um, so we said, listen, we'll take, I think it was 6% of the value of the order, mm-hmm. right? Uh, as a fee, right? Yeah. Which is very small. Like on average, since then, we've charged like whatever we're making yeah. is one seventh of what the entrepreneur is making on the actual project. Okay. Even though we're putting out all of the capital, right? Okay. But the magic is in the time value of money. Yeah. Is that we're putting out capital when it's coming back, it's coming back with a return, but in a very short space of sure. time, right? Um, and then you compound it. And you compound it. And then you're compounding. Um, but let's leave it for there for today. Jeez, and thank you so much. Uh, when I think purchase order funding, I think of, this is just me, and this again is for people to to go research. There's something called invoice discounting, yep. I think. There's a gentleman I was exposed to years ago, Tibucho Mukhashua mm. of Tepfen. I think he may have been involved in the building of Pan-African Mall and Alex. Yeah. But these become some of the names that I hope people will go and research on their own. I'll mm. hopefully put them in the description. 
if not the comments, so that people can learn that some of us are actually moving yep. and doing stuff. And don't let the propaganda tell you that there aren't young black men, women, mm. boys, girls that are actually doing really dope shit. 100%. I'm looking forward to part two, but officially for now, uh, happy six years. Thank you. And we're going to celebrate six years again when we do part two and, and close us off. From that point when you start getting into good money, yeah. to where we are today. 100%. Leander Chafter, thank you so much. The People's Fund. I hope people go check it out. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Peño. Cheers. Cheers.